Hey folks, it's Erica. Today I'm going to read you a book called Bar Graphs. And in this book, we're going to learn all about how people can organize information into easy to read visuals called graphs. To get us started, I'm going to go over three vocabulary words that are going to come up in the book, and I'm going to go over them now so that when I read them, you might understand a little bit more about them, and it'll help you understand a little bit more uh, about what the book is talking about. The first word that I'm going to go over is the word sort. Take a minute, take a couple seconds rather, think about where you've heard this word before. Think about what it might mean. Sort means to separate things into groups. One example of this is if you're someone who eats M&Ms, maybe you're going to sort them or put them into groups by their color. Another example is when you are getting back from the grocery store and you're trying to put your groceries away. I know that some people, myself included, I put them into piles by what goes in the refrigerator, what goes in the pantry, what goes in the bread box what's for my dogs. That's what sort means. The next word that we have is compare. Same thing, take a couple seconds. Where have you heard this word? What could it mean? Compare means to judge something against something else. So sometimes I compare myself as a runner against other runners, meaning I look at how fast they went or how long they ran for. Um, sometimes my brother and I uh, compare ourselves over who's the best child in my family, right? Who did all of their chores? That was when I was younger. Who always listened to mom and dad? That's what compare means. The last word we have is amount. Again, where have you heard it? What could it mean? Amount means how much you have of something, right? The amount of words that we just went over is three. We had amount, that's sort, that's two, and we had compare, that's three. So again, amount is how much you have of something. Now that we have those words in our head, I'm going to go ahead and get started reading. I'm going to go ahead and hold the book up like this, and I will try my best to give you close-ups of the pictures. I'm also going to ask you to pause at some points and think about what I'm talking about. I'd love to hear your responses, but unfortunately we can't be together. So at least we'll get a little bit of our thinking done. If you really want to reach out to me, you can always have your adult send me an email. So again, this book is called Bar Graphs. Table of Contents. This is always something good that can get our brains warmed up to, to you know, thinking about what our book's going to be all about. It also can help us find information zippy quick. Because this is the first time I'm reading this book, I'm going to read it all the way through in the order that it's written. Sometimes we don't have to do that with nonfiction books. The first section is going to be all about animals. Second section is making a bar graph. Fruit, friends, graphing food. Then we have a glossary. That's where um, certain vocabulary words, the definitions are written there. And I'll show you that at the end and you could use it as a reference. Read more, internet sites. I'll show you those pages as well. And index. I have little sticky notes on the book just to help me remember things. The heading here links back to the table of contents over here. I'm going to read those first, and it'll give you a moment to think about what this book, or this section rather, excuse me, is going to be all about. Animals. Zebras, elephants, and giraffes. Let's play with the animals in the toy room. How many of each kind do we have? I'm going to zoom in on this picture, and I want you to think about how many we have. We can sort animals into groups. 
which group has the most? Let's put animals in rows by kind. Now we can see the zebra group has the most. So that's one, two, three, four giraffes. That's one, two, three, four, five zebras. That's one, two elephants. We have made a bar graph. Bar graphs compare the amount of each kind. Making a bar graph. We can compare animals without lining them up. Let's use a paper. Let's use paper to make a graph. Put the names of the animals at the bottom. Giraffes, zebras, elephants. Numbers go along the side. One, two, three, four, five. We have four giraffes. One, two, three, four. Fill up the bar to four. Color the zebra bar up to five. One, you can count with me. Two, three, four, five. Don't forget our two elephants. Hmm, how high is our bar gonna go on this one? Think about it while I move to that section. One, two. Give yourself a little kiss on the brain for thinking about that. The taller the bar, the more of something we have. Our bar graph shows we have the most zebras. The tallest. Which one is the shortest? It's the elephants. The other ones stand up taller or higher than the elephant bar. Bar graphs can go up and down or from side to side. This is the same information on its side. It looks a lot like the rows of toys. Again, we see the numbers along one side, the animal names on the other. Fruit. Did we, did we buy more apples, oranges, or bananas at the market? Take a second here, study the picture. Let's make a graph and compare. So keep that idea in your head until we make this graph. So they've sorted all the fruit. Let's write the name of the fruit on the side, oranges, apples, bananas, the numbers, one through five, the numbers can go along the bottom. We have the fewest bananas. The yellow bar for bananas is the shortest. We have the most oranges. The orange bar is the longest. Hmm. Let's pause for a moment here. How many fruit did we have in all? I'll show you how you can figure it out. You can count each section to determine or figure out how many you have in all. That's something else our bar graphs can show us. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There's eleven fruit in all. We have the most oranges. There are five of those. The fewest that we had? Bananas. How many did we have for bananas? Two. Okay. Friends. A group of friends gives us a lot, give us, gives us lots to graph. Each kid has worn a favorite color shirt. Wonder if you could do that with your friends, the folks at your house. Blue is the most popular color. Only one child likes yellow the best. Hmm. Let's use some of those math, math words we heard before. Which one has the most? Blue. Which one do we have the fewest of or the least amount of? Yellow. Let's review from the last page. How many do we have in all? Six. We can make a graph of hair color. Which color is the most common? That's another way of saying which one do we have the most of. Dark hair is the most common. Light hair is less common, less common, excuse me. Red hair is the least common. Dark hair has the most, light hair is in the middle, and red hair has the least amount. I'm going to ask us another question. How many more people had dark hair than red hair? I'm going to show you how you can figure that out. Look at how high each bar is and see what the difference is or what's the not filled in space between the two. So we're not going to count this one, right? Because we're not really talking about light hair. We're just talking about dark hair and red hair. So I'm going to go over here to the red hair. I see that it's filled up to one. I see that dark hair is also filled up to one. But then when I go above, hmm, there's no red hair, but there is dark hair. So that tells me, okay, that's one. Same thing up here with two. So that tells me that there are two more people who have dark hair than red hair. You could also say that as um, there are two less people that have red hair than dark hair. Let's make a graph about pets. I don't know if you heard in the background, but my dog just walked down the stairs. Cats are more popular than dogs with these kids. One child has no pets. Let's do another check. How many kids got to talk about their pets on this graph? I'll ask it another way. How many do we have in all? Six. How many more kids had cats than dogs. This column is dogs. This bar, excuse me, is dogs. This one is cats. We see there's two. There's two over here. Whoop, when we go up here though, there's none, but there is one for cats. One more person likes cats than dogs or one less person likes dogs over cats. Graphing food, home connection. 
Wonder if you folks could do this at your house. How would you graph these foods? Your graph will look different if you sort by color, type of food, or the first letter of its name. Challenge. Can you make a graph of this food? You can have your adult pause the video so that you can see it for longer. Extra challenge. Can you graph some things around your home right now? Here's the glossary. I'm going to hold it up. If you want to learn more about these words, have someone help you pause it. I'm also going to show you the read more. I'm not sure you'll be able to get these books, but maybe you could. I'm also going to show you some internet sites and it actually tells you a safe way to go on the internet with the help of someone um, to find more about all this, to find more about bar graphs and other math things. So here is the read more. Here is the internet sites. Thanks for joining me while we learned a little bit about bar graphs. Feel free to have your adults email me. My email is erica, E-R-I-C-A dot rose, R-O-S-E at k12.dc.gov to show me your bar graphs and tell me everything that you're learning about. Thanks.